While Australia's outback was once wetland and water, this country was once covered in ice. Time and again in the last few million years, glaciers have ground across these hills. Those were the good times for one of Australia's smallest marsupials, a brilliant cold climate specialist. But Baramus parvus, the mountain pygmy possum, finds itself in much the same peril as the flamingo half a million years ago. There's no problem with its food supply, not at least in spring and summer when the moths swarm to the mountains to breed. For all that, Baramus has gambled on an evolutionary path which looks like turning into a dead end. Summer is the time for feasting and fattening. Most pygmy possums store excess fat in their tails to prevent their tiny bodies overheating. But Baramus stores it in a layer under its skin. And over the fat it wears a thick fur coat more than twice as warm as other mammals its size. And all this preparation is in readiness for just one thing, winter. For five months each year, a blanket of snow covers the mountain pygmy possum's stronghold in the Australian Alps. But Baramis is untroubled. Deep within the basalt rock scree, protected by its fat and fur, and the added insulation of a cosy nest, it goes into a torpor. For 20 days at a time, the possum hoards its strength, while up above, frosts and blizzards scour the land. The male Baramus can once more migrate to the female's nests in safety. But there's no such easy answer to the pygmy possum's long-term problem. For many creatures, the retreat of the snow will offer new habitats for settlement. Just downstream lives a creature with one of the most restricted habitats of all. It's not surprising that the spotted tree frog is rare. The wonder is that it survives at all. For the peculiar conditions it needs exist in only a dozen boulder-filled streams in the Great Dividing Range. In late spring, when the nights are warm, the males call competing for a mate. They give their offspring the best chance they can by laying their eggs in quiet pools away from the direct current. From then on, the tadpoles are on their own. They're not strong swimmers. In the mainstream, they'd soon get carried off. Instead, they wiggle about in protected waters, feeding on what gets washed in. But the weather in the mountains is fickle. Even in late summer, snowstorms can sweep up from the south. Torrential rain soaks the land, swelling the streams to torrents. Desperately, the tadpoles hug the gravel, but some are inevitably swept away. Downstream, there aren't many places where they'd survive. 
but just as common as summer storms are summer droughts. As the sun burns down, the mountain streams can turn to trickles. In the stagnant pools, the water temperature goes up, oxygen levels plummet. The tadpoles suffocate in thousands. An animal with so tiny a range and such an unpredictable habitat is perilously close to extinction. One devastating drought or savage flood could wipe it out completely. But this year, some survive to keep the species going. The tiny frogs emerge in autumn. Soon they'll be facing the snows of winter. If they make it through to spring, the males will have to live for another year before they're old enough to mate. The females will have to wait even longer until after their third winter. A long time by frog standards. They're big enough now to survive all but the fiercest storms or harshest droughts. But there are other hazards.